Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Harsha Ali Khan. So far, I have completed 13 problems on CVP analysis. This is the last video. Two, three more problems I'm going to explain you. That will be the end of the problems on CVP analysis. So you have seen each and every problem will be a different problem. So uh, all the problems are based on the formulas. Without knowing the formula, you cannot be able to understand the problems. So my suggestion, be clear about the concepts which are used in CVP analysis and the formulas applied in order to find out the PV ratio, margin of safety, contribution, break-even point. So many formulas are there. While watching the video, always note down the formula, whatever I'm saying and make all the calculations, then only you can learn. So before starting the next problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, see the 14th problem. SM Agro Limited has 500 hectares of land which grows rice, wheat and ragi either jointly or individually. So here the limiting factor is the land. Only SM Agro Limited, this company is having a maximum land of 500 hectares. On this land, the company wants to grow either rice, wheat or ragi either jointly or individually. Now, yield per hectare and selling price per kilogram for different crops are as under. For rice per hectare, yield is 2500 kilogram. And the selling price of rice per kilogram is 25. Wheat, 625 kilogram per hectare of land. And the price, selling price of uh, wheat is 50 rupees. Ragi, 125 kilogram per hectare of land. And the selling price of ragi, 300 rupees per kilogram. This is the data given per hectare. How much is the output in kilogram that is given relevant cost data are given below uh, rice, wheat, ragi, variable cost per kilogram, labor charges, packing material, other cost. These are the variable cost per kilogram. Similarly, fixed cost per annum, cultivation and growing cost, administrative cost, land revenue, repairs and maintenance, other cost. These are all the fixed cost per annum. This will not change whatever be the product mix. <coughs> now, the maximum and minimum area for cultivating per product is as follows. Rice, maximum area required for growing rice is 320 hectare and minimum area 240 hectare. Wheat 160, ragi 60, 20. Calculate the priority of production, maximum profit at suggested product mix. So two questions are asked. What is the product mix? That means how much area should be allotted for each of the crop? For rice how much? For wheat how much? For ragi how much? That's what. The limiting factor, key factor is the availability of land in hectares. Totally 500 hectares are available. All right. Now, whenever there is a limiting factor or key factor, we calculate contribution per unit of that limiting factor contribution per unit of that limiting factor here in our case land is the limiting factor land the unit of land is given in hectares so what is the contribution per hectare of land contribution per hectare of land so whichever crop gives more contribution per hectare of land that should be given first rank so we will calculate what is the contribution per hectare of land now see carefully here <coughs> Selling price per kilogram. Per kilogram selling price for rice 25 rupees, for wheat 50 rupees, and ragi 300 rupees given in the problem. Secondly, we take the variable cost. The variable cost per kilogram are given labor charges, packing material, other cost. Specifically given variable cost per kilogram. Take the total variable cost per kilogram 17.5 per kilogram for rice, 16.25 wheat and 187.5 ragi so we are having selling price per kilogram we are having variable cost per kilogram 
selling price minus variable cost we will get contribution per kilogram so here contribution per kilogram a minus b that means 25 minus 17.5 7.5 is the contribution per kilogram from rice similarly 50 minus 16.25 33.75 is the contribution per kilogram from wheat and 300 minus 187.5 112.5 is the contribution per kilogram from ragi so we have calculated contribution per kilogram now how much kilogram we can grow per hectare per hectare how much kilogram each crop can be grown so rice it is given in the problem in the first uh, uh, table rice 2500 kilogram per hectare 2500 kilogram of rice can be grown so here contribute uh, output per hectare 2500 wheat 625 ragi 125 kilogram this is the output per hectare we want contribution per hectare so one kilogram how much contribution we are getting from rice 7.5 how many kilograms we are growing per hectare 2500 multiply 7.5 into 2500 18,750 18, this is the contribution per hectare of land this is the contribution per hectare of land from rice similarly contribution per kilogram 33.75 how many kilograms? 625. Multiply 33.75 into 625, 21,094. This is the contribution per hectare from wheat. 112.5 is the contribution per kilogram. How many kilograms? 125. Multiply 112.5 into 125, 14,063. This is the contribution per hectare from ragi. Now see, which contribution is the highest? From which crop the contribution per hectare is the highest? You can see here 21,094. This is the highest contribution per hectare of land from wheat. So first rank will be given to wheat. First priority will be given to wheat. Secondly, after 21,000, 18,750, we are getting the contribution from rice. So this will be allotted second rank. Lastly, third rank is ragi. So preferential order is first we give the preference to wheat, second rice, third ragi. Hence, profit can be maximized when the order of priority of production is wheat, rice and ragi. Right? Now, second question is asking you to calculate the maximum profit if we grow in this order. So, statement showing the calculation of maximum profit at the suggested product mix. This is the suggested product mix. Product, rice, wheat, ragi. Maximum area. How much maximum area we require? 320 for rice, 100 for wheat and ragi 60 given in the problem area. Then yield per hectare. Per hectare how many kilograms we are growing? 2500, 625, 125. All these things are given. Now total production. Per hectare we are growing 2500 kilogram. How many hectares do we have? 320 hectares. Multiply 2500 into 320. 8,000, sorry, 8 lakh kilogram of rice we can grow. 8 lakh kilogram, right? Per kilogram, what is the contribution? Here we have calculated contribution. Contribution from rice, 7.5. 7 rupee 50 paisa per kilogram contribution. How many kilogram of rice we are growing? 8 lakh. So 8 lakh into 7.5, 60 lakh is the contribution we are getting from rice. Similarly, how much contribution from wheat? 100 hectares we are using. Each hectare, how much kilogram? 625 kilogram given in the problem. Per hectare, 625 kilogram. 100 hectares are, are there. So 100 into 625, 62,500. And what is the per contribution per kilogram? 33.75. 33.75. 62,500 into 33.75. 219,375. This is the total contribution from wheat. Now lastly, ragi, 60. Area is 60. What is the contribution per, uh, what is the yield, sorry, yield. Yield per hectare, 125. Per hectare, 125 kilogram is the yield. Multiply 60 into 125, 7500 is the total production of ragi. And each kilogram gives how much contribution? 112.5. 112.5 multiply 7500 into 112.5 8 lakh 43750 
we got the contribution from rice, wheat and ragi. Take the total contribution, it comes to 89,53,125. This is the total contribution from all the three products. From this, we subtract the fixed cost. The fixed cost is given in the problem. See here. Fixed cost per annum cultivation growing cost 16 lakh. Here 16 lakh. Then administrative cost 4 lakh 50 thousand. Land revenue 2 lakh 75 thousand. Repair and maintenance 5 lakh. And 6 lakh 75 thousand other cost. All these are the fixed cost per annum. It will not change whatever be the product mix. So take the total of the fixed cost. It comes to 35 lakh. Now subtract. 89 lakh 53 125 minus 35 lakh. You will get 54 lakh 53,125. This is the profit from the recommended mix, product mix. That's all. So, this is the end of problem number 14. Now, 15th problem. A company finds that while it costs rupees 6.25 each to make component X, the same is available in the market at 5.75 each with assurance of continued supply. The breakdown of cost is as under. This is a problem on make or buy decision. Many a times a business is confronted with a problem whether to make the component or buy it from outside. So we have to compare what is the cost of making and what is the supplier price. If the supplier price is lower, we go ahead to purchase from the supplier. If the production cost is less, then the supplier price, it is better to produce it. It is called make or buy decision. Now here, uh, if we make the component, the cost comes to 6 rupee 25 paisa, 6.25. Where a supplier has given the supplier price as 5.75. Apparently, it looks like the supplier price is less. It is 5.75. So we should purchase it. No. We have to find out the breakdown of the cost of 6.25. That 6.25 consists of what items? Here breakdown is given material 2.75, labor 1.75, other variable cost 0.5, other fixed cost 1.25, total 6.25. To make the product 6 rupee 25 paisa is incurred. In that 6 rupee 25 paisa, so and so cost are given. The first question should you make or buy? <coughs> The decision should be taken whether to make it or buy it. Now, while taking the decision of make or buy, we compare the variable cost with the supplier price. Fixed cost should not be considered while taking the make or buy decision because the fixed cost has to be incurred whether we make it or buy it. At any cost, we have to incur the fixed cost. Right? So, ignoring fixed cost, we should take only variable cost and compare the variable cost with the supplier price. Then take the decision. Now here, make or buy decision, variable cost per unit, material 2.75, labor 1.75, other variable cost 0.5. So total variable cost per unit is 5 rupees. We have not considered the fixed cost. Ignoring fixed cost, only variable cost we have taken. So 5 rupees per unit. So to make one unit, 5 rupees are incurred, whereas supplier is supplying the material at 5.75, so which is less, variable cost is less. So we suggest the company to make the product, don't buy it from the supplier, it will be costly. So here, supplier price per unit is 5.75, since variable cost per unit is less than the supplier price per unit, so it is advised to make the product. Final decision. We suggest the company, we advise the company to make the product, don't buy it from the supplier. Because variable cost per unit is less than the supplier price. Now, the fixed cost should not be considered and it has to be incurred whether we make the product or buy it from outside. So normally, in normal situation, whenever we take the make or buy decision, we should not consider the fixed cost assuming that fixed cost will remain same whether we make it or buy it. Next, if the supplier, second question is also there. What should be your decision if the supplier offers the component at rupees 4.85 each? Suppose the supplier has reduced the price to 4.85. 
Whereas what is the variable cost of making the product? 5 rupees. That means supplier price is less. The supplier is supplying at 4.85. Whereas if we make 5 rupees, so it is better to purchase it, to buy it from the supplier. So here, if the supplier price is reduced to 4.85, then it is suggested to buy it from the supplier as supplier price is less than the variable cost. That's it. This is the end of problem number 15. Now, problem number 16. From the following data, which product would you recommend to be manufactured in a factory? Time being the key factor. So many problems we have done on key factor. Previous problem we have seen the land was the key factor. So we have calculated contribution per hectare of land. Similarly here, time is the key factor. And time is measured in terms of hours. So we calculate contribution per hour. So whichever product gives more contribution per hour, that product is suggested. That product is preferred. Now, two products are given, product A, product B. We have to decide which product is better. Product A, product B, direct material 24, 14, direct labor 2, 3, variable over it 4, 6, selling price 100 and 110, standard time to produce one unit, 2 hours and 3 hours. So first of all, selling price is given, variable cost is given. So we can calculate contribution per unit. See here. Selling price per unit A 100 rupees, B 110. Variable cost consists of direct material, direct labor, variable over it. Variable cost 30 rupees, 23 rupees. Selling price minus variable cost will get the contribution. So 100 minus 30, 70 is the contribution per unit. And 110 minus 23, 87 is the contribution. Suppose if there is no limiting factor, no key factor, that product is better whose contribution per unit is more. Here contribution per unit is more for B product. So we suggest B product if there is no key factor. But in our problem, time is the key factor. So we have to calculate contribution per hour. So how many hours are required to make one unit? It is given standard time to make one unit, two hours, three hours. Two hours, three hours. This is a standard time. Now we, uh, we want contribution per hour. To make one unit, two hours are required. After two hours, we are getting contribution of 70 rupees. So two hours are required to make one unit. So after one unit, we are getting 70 rupees. That means two hours, 70 rupees per hour, 35 rupees. So per hour contribution, we are getting 35 rupees. See here. Contribution per hour, contribution per unit divided by standard time to make one unit. 70 divided by 2, 35 rupees. So per hour contribution, 35 rupees we are getting from A product. B product, 87 is the contribution per unit, 3 hours are required. 87 by 3 is equal to 29 rupees. So contribution per hour is 35 rupees for A product, 29 rupees for B product. Whichever product gives more contribution per hour, that is suggested. Here A product gives 35. So uh, since time is the key factor, so it is more profitable whose contribution per hour is more. Hence, product A is more profitable. That's it. So, totally 16 problems are selected for CVP analysis. In this unit, one more part is there that is called standard costing and variance analysis. In the next video, inshallah, I will start the topic of standard costing and variance analysis. These 16 problems are enough for uh, facing the problem on CVP analysis. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video. Share my channel among your groups, among your friends so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. Give your comments. And lastly, buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we will start the next topic in the next video.